past few weeks I've been taking a look at the world of upscalers, not just any old upscalers, creative upscalers. Let's jump in and take a look. This all started when I first saw Magnifique, and if you're unfamiliar with Magnifique, it's essentially the first creative upscaler that really blew up on the internet. Everybody started talking about it after they saw this, and for good reason. You can take these seemingly blurry images like this and you can add this new detail. Now, of course, one of the things that stands out from this is it is not a regular upscaler. A regular upscaler works by taking the pixel data, the actual individual color sample data from an image, and then expanding upon it, trying to resample the image so that that original pixel data still carries on. These creative upscalers, on the other hand, run stable diffusion models and a whole bunch of other things on top of an image to add new details. So they're in fact not upscaling an image, but they're actually creating a new image based on the original image. So you can really think of this more like a control net or image to image where you take an original image and then you run it back through stable diffusion and then it generates a brand new image that might resemble the original but it really is a new image with new pixel data so what i spent the last several weeks doing is actually building my own i created this site pixeldojo.ai and my idea here was to build the ultimate ai playground all of the latest stable diffusion models uncensored, completely open to use, and upscaling, enhancing, creative upscalers, consistent characters, you name it. I'm sort of adding all this stuff as time goes on. Jumping in, you can explore all the different main models, Proteus, Playground, Stability AI, Stable Diffusion, Juggernaut, you name it. You can also come into the brand new creative image upscaler, and this is what I've spent the bulk of my time doing and really what we're gonna focus in on on this video. See, I spent a lot of time studying what Magnifique does and how they get those images so crisp and clear. I think I've stumbled upon a few ways that they do it. First of all, it's Comfy UI workflows. Now, if you're not familiar with Comfy UI, check out my video on the subject so you can install it and start playing around with your own workflows. And there, there are a whole bunch of terms you can see all around the internet, multi-diffusion, control net tiling. And if you start stacking some of these things, these concepts up together in a workflow, you can create these really amazing images. For example, let's start with this one, this Stable Diffusion 3 image that was sort of one of the press release images that came out when they started talking about Stable Diffusion 3. You can click on it, that's gonna preload the image up here, also the prompt and the negative prompt. Now, the prompt and negative prompt are optional when you're doing this creative upscaling, but they can help sort of guide the model. And we'll talk about that more here in a bit. Now, you can come in here and there's a whole bunch of advanced controls. I'm gonna tell you about each one of these and what they do and kind of best practices for using them. Now, the first and probably the most important one is actually fractality. Fractality actually divides your image, your single image up into a grid. And then it runs stable diffusion across each one of the squares in the grid individually. But the overall image is still steered by your prompt. So if you crank up the fractility, let's say to 256, this is kind of the highest setting that I've got here, you can get this really fine detail because it breaks down your image into these much smaller squares. So we'll go ahead and crank that up. We'll leave creativity, scale, resemblance, everything else how it is, and we'll generate an image so you can see what I mean. Here's the result. You can see, if you look just at the top here, you can see there's a lot more detail. The blurry tree in the back gets more details, especially the moss down below as well. So it's just an overall clarified picture from the original. Now, we can go a whole heck of a lot further than this. This is the default settings for creativity, but first I wanna show you a low fractility. So we're gonna go extremes here, and then I'm gonna explain how all this works. We can take that down to 16. Now, instead of 256 by 256 grid, this is gonna be a 16 by 16, so I'm gonna expect a lot less fine detail to come from this. All right, and here's the result of that you can notice there is a ton of artifacting. So what you wanna do if you're generating an image, you wanna find kind of a happy medium. And typically, you know, I actually, if an image looks good with a higher fractality, I typically go that route. 
It does take longer to generate with a higher fractality because essentially you're running stable diffusion across a much larger grid. This only took a few seconds for this particular image to come back, but you can see it doesn't look good. So find us someplace in the middle. Usually the default settings that I have are pretty good, but we're gonna crank it up. Next one I'm gonna talk about here is creativity. You can think about this as how much or how little the system hallucinates. How much is it actually gonna change the underlying details in your image? Because remember, this is being run through Stable Diffusion. In this case, the Stable Diffusion model is Juggernaut Reborn. I do have other models available, so Epic Realism, Flat 2D, but we're gonna crank this up. So right now it's at 0.35, which is a pretty low setting. Let's see what happens if we take this up to 0.7. We're gonna turn fractality all the way back up to 256 and see what this generates. All right, we really gotta take a look at this one. As a reminder, here's our before image. And as we start to scroll over, man, look at how much detail is put into the trees and ground. I mean, that's pretty incredible. And we get over to the robot, just look at this end cap. Holy cow. The detail and the clarity in this robot is pretty extreme. Now you can see it did change the text on there, but I'm gonna show you, I think we can maybe get back to how it was before. Even look at the ground, the background. The background was super blurry before. You've still got those sun streaks. You've still got those light rays coming through, but man, the level of detail is just insane. So this would be a really cool way to take a stable diffusion image that you generate with another system or even with Pixel Dojo, take that image, run it through the Creative Upscaler, and then you can get an incredible amount of detail out of this. All right, but how do we retain some of those original details, like possibly the text? So one of the things you can do here is you can go over to the resemblance. The resemblance, as the name sort of implies, is how much the image that's generated looks like the original image. So we can go ahead and bump that up. Let's say in this case we go to 0.8 and we'll just see how well that does. We can also drop the creativity down just a nudge to 6.5 and we'll generate an image. All right, here we go. So if you look, we still got that amazing detail from the plants. Look at that. Look at just the top of the robot's head. Holy cow. And then nice. Okay, we still get a SD3 on there. So that's looking great. And the rest of this image what a massive change so and we could still probably bump up the resemblance a little bit more the creativity down just a little bit but man what a massive difference between these two images keeping those same settings let's take a look at another example this is stable cascade this is one of the images that i generated using stable cascade in one of my previous videos so let's use that as a base and upscale it we have the result here's the before image you can see that Stable Cascade, just like Stable Diffusion, creates pretty soft images. They're not really in focus too much. They're not, they're not sharp. Now you can of course sharpen these. You can run them through a different systems in order to get that sharpness. But man, look at this. <laughs> just this cat on the end here. And we come into the middle. Look at the level of detail that this is able to add. Just look at the fur on the chest, the hands, the eyes everything even the background look at the lighting back there right and then see this this cat on the left here in the back you can't even see him before and then afterwards it's got this incredible level of detail so man you can really see what a difference this makes now you can tell here there's this little break in the stable cascade sign in the middle if you don't like that you could use end painting or you can just bump up the either drop down the creativity or bump up the resemblance a little bit but man overall just looking at the level of detail you get in these cats what a massive difference and i should note if you look back here as well the scale factor is two so this actually doubled the size of the image so it's went from 1024 by 1024 to 2048 by 2048 you can also scale factor up to 4x you could also technically speaking take that 2x or 4x upscaled image and run it back through this upscaler again to get a 2x or 4x really really massive image so you can do this multiple times if you want to now, of course i was just using the sample images the examples below here which preload a prompt and everything else but you can also upload your own file so if you wanted to use something that you generated with dolly 3 or bing image creator you just 
fire it up in here, do that same upscaling. Hopefully you learned something about creative AI upscaling. And if you did, be sure to grab a pixeldojo.ai pro plan. The subscription allows for unlimited AI image generation. So you can use the AI image creator, the creative upscaler, and even the consistent characters. I'm also adding new cool stuff all the time. So be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you want to see next. Otherwise, thank you so much. We'll check you next time. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All your tech AI, earning the renown.